mention this macro inverter or any great tie inverter they do have a very tight spec as far as the voltage and the frequency is concerned uh, they want to make sure before they're turning on the macro inverter the voltage is solidly close to the 240 volt in this scenario that because it's a 240 volt and the frequency is as close as possible to the 60 hertz uh, one of the reasons is because when the macro inverter is coming up first you cannot control the power that is putting out based on the so location of the sun they are going to put as much power as possible and the second is the frequency of the uh, uh, inverter is going to get latched on to the uh, grid uh, frequency and they are going to be in sync other than that, it's going to cause a problem. I mean, they, the two supply, they must have the same frequency and probably the voltage on the macro inverter must be a little higher to force in the current through the grid. This uh, inverter uh, right in here, that made by the magnet is a 4024 PAE, has this feature that if the voltage going so far up in a uh, high, uh, AC side is causing the DC side voltage to go up if it's not being used by the uh, batteries it means the battery is going to get fully charged the voltage is going to start raising up based on the threshold that I set up is causing the frequency of the 60 Hertz shift to the 60.6 and that is causing the macro inverter to go off so this is going to be some sort of a safety feature if our dump load, something happened to it and it doesn't work, the second uh, safety net that we do have is going to be, macro, in, this inverter is going to shut the macro inverter off. And the whole reason of the having the dump load is because when the macro inverter coming on, the power on that is not controllable. They put the maximum power that is possible when they are on. So I have to continuously using that power. But on the, inside the house, sometimes I use the light, sometimes I don't use the light, sometimes I use the power that has been generated by the macro inverter, sometimes I don't. I don't know how much of it I'm going to use. That is the whole reason of the having the dump load. So the dump load is all the time is right there and is using the power that is not being used inside the house. The beauty of this dump load is this. This is automatically checking the line and if we do have excess power that is not being used inside the house or is not uh, the batteries are already being uh, fully charged start dumping them out for you and I'm using the resistive load for my dump load resistive load in this scenario for me is going to be the light bulb I bought this light bulb these are a thousand watt each one is 500 watt I bought them from Home Depot, uh, from the Harbor Freight. I bought them about 40 bucks each and I changed the light bulb to the 240 volt. They used to be 120 volt. Still they are 500 watt. The reason that I'm using 240 because I want to dump the load that is being generated with this macro inverter. The macro inverter generating 240 watt. I just dump right away. I don't need to dump 120 to run into the transformer or I'll use half a branch of it just directly dump them when I don't need them and I divide my load I use the load as I explained it to you guys the maximum power that my inverter generating by one o'clock in the afternoon the best day was somewhere around less than 5500 watt so I generate the 5500 uh, watt of the dump load right in here and I divide them to the five load 500, 1000, 1000, 1500. Two of the other load is going to be this light is heat gone. Each one is going to be 1500 watt. Again, I'm repeating this. All of my dump load are 240 volt. I change the light bulb on those and this heat gun, I bought them. This heat gun is, uh, has a two mode, has 150. Uh, 750 and 1500 watt if you keep in them in a 750 regardless that is 120 volt you can connect them to the 240 volt and at that time it's going to give you 1500 watt 
power. Don't note that 1500 watt dump load is going to come through this plot. This one is going to be the top and the bottom. They both connected to the load number one. The top one is going to be load number two. Bottom one is load number three. They are separated. This plot and this plot are separated. They were load number four and load number five. Load number one is going to be right in here. This is 500 watt right in here. Load number two is going to be this one, 1000 watt, 2500 watt light bulb. Load number three is going to be again, 1000 watt, 2500 watt right in here. Load number four is going to be this heat gun, 1500 watt is going to be connected right in here. And load number five is going to be again, another one of his heat gun, 1500 watt is being connected right in here. This morning star relay right in here being activating those relay with a 200 millivolt interval. So when my voltage reach to the 14 volt, you can set them up today any voltage that you want. I pick 14 to 15 volt to start dumping the load. Every 200 millivolt I add more load. The first one is all the time it's connected. That 500 watt is all the time connected. The minute that I hit to the 14 volt, that 500 watt load is start is start dumping the load, and the higher the uh, voltage that it get, the more load is going to get dumped to that five, uh, 500 watt uh, load. The minute that it hit to the 14.2 volt uh, relay connecting the 15, uh, the another thousand watt to it. When we get to the 14.4. It been adding another thousand volt, watt load right there, and uh, follow with a two fifteen hundred watt. This is going to be the schematic of my <coughs> dump load. This is shows the five hundred watts right in here, one thousand, one thousand, fifteen hundred, and fifteen hundred. All this is we, we can see this dump load right now as a, some sort of the dimmer switch with this different this dimmer switch work with a zero crossing i explain what is zero crossing is and why is important to use a zero crossing uh, scr when you're using the zero crossing scr you are going to have let me just show you something right in here now I'm going to draw something right in here. If you take, just take a look at this, this is one full cycle of the sine wave. On the regular power that you do have, you have 60 hertz. It means 60 of full cycle per second you are going to have. This system that I built right in here, it can give you one half a cycle minimum, maximum 120 of them. So the minimum load that I can have is going to be because my first load is 500 divided by 12, one, uh, 120 because it's 120 half a cycle. That is going to be something around 4.2 watt or so. So the minimum load that I can have is going to be 4.2 watt and it goes all the way to the 500 watt. And then the next load is going to be added. The next load is going to be added and the following load is going to be added. As you can see right now, we are not using any real load on it. Whatever we do have in a circuitry is a dump load. So if the battery need to get charged, it's going to get charged. And rest of it is going to go to the dump load. You can see in this scope, I am showing right now the amount of the load that is going to get dumped on the uh, uh, resistive load that I do have. You can see how it's going to be. It's integer number of the half a cycle. You do not see a fraction of the half a cycle. It's an integer number, as you can see in the right in here. Let me change the scope a little bigger, that you can see a better resolution on it. You can see in the right in here. Is how often this thing is happening? Well, it just depends on how much load we need to dump. If we do have too much load to be dumped, the, the SCR is going to stay on a little longer. If we need less, it's going to be less. So, anywhere between 14 to 15 volt. I divide that one to the 200 millivolt uh, interval and I put a load in there and the uh, SCR is going to trigger the farther that you get closer to the closer that you get to the uh, 15 volt the more often the more uh, the SCR is going to trigger is keeping the light or the load more often on remember that all of this is my dump load 
my real load is going to be with this orange circuitry right in here. I'm just going to go ahead and put a real load on it and then you will see I don't have anything to be dumped. So this light that you can't see right now is keep blinking and it's burning the extra power. It's not going to blink as often anymore. To do so, I'm just going to go ahead and add <coughs> This, I have two light bulb right in here. Each one is a 75 watt. I'm going to turn them on and then follow with a 750 watt load. I'm going to put them on to see what's going to happen. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on right now 75 watt. This 75 watt load, as you see, still it cannot make a dent. This is just for the three inverter generating this much excess power. So you just imagine if this is going to be 30, I'm going to have more load to dump. So more of the, those light and the heater is going to come on to dumping the load. Now I'm just going to add another light bulb in there. That's going to be 150 watt is going to be happening. If you take a look at the, if I just go ahead and make this one a little more resolution, bring them a little lower. Okay, now you can see it. Yo, you see how, how, how often the, uh, the uh, how often the SCR is getting triggered. If I turn off the light, the SCR is triggering more. If I put more load on, SCR is not coming on at all. Let me just go ahead and put a 750 watt load right now and see what's going to happen. Now, as you see the light, let me just turn off these lights. I don't need them anymore. That 750 is enough. You can see no more load is going to get dumped. Everything is going to go to the real load that you do have. The real load could be light bulb inside your house, your TV, your refrigerator, dishwasher, washer, or any other appliances that you do have in the house. When they are used, you know, is no excessive load. So, and at the same time, you can see the inverter are on. This inverter is pulling 21 volt. This is almost 10 amps, so it's almost 200 watt. This inverter is putting 200 watt is input of it. So because they do have very good efficiency, let us assume about 180 watt is coming out of that. The same thing for this one. This is pulling about 200 watt input, so it's putting about 180 uh, watt out. And this, the, the, the third one right in here is using the battery. I don't have any meter connected to it to show you the voltage and current that is pulling but let's just assume all three of this inverter put in something around 500 watt out so from the 750 watt power that i'm using 500 coming from this three inverter and the 250 is coming out of the battery as you can see right in here is coming out of the back as you see no current no extra voltages going toward the dump load 